very happy that uh, we are sharing our experience with each other. It's great. And uh, for me, it's a great chance to uh, to talk with great educators like you. A big chance is introduced by Mohammed Nabil. I'd like to thank him very much for this. And let me start uh, by as a topic we will try to introduce today. So it's about the meaning of Russia. So I'd like to ask this question to anyone. Have you ever heard about the word Russia before in teaching? Anyone share this? No. So I have the answer from Randa. So our topic today is using teacher-student ratio and teaching across modalities in classroom assessment. So ratio is a way between the questions the teachers uh, are delivering to their students and the responses which they are receiving from the students. So sometimes when we are asking students about something and we are waiting for the answers. So a lot of people are saying it's a very normal process, but if we are looking at this, it's no, it's, it's, it's a very hard and very complicated process because between the time we are asking the questions and the time we are receiving the answers. So there are a lot of, of, of actions inside it. So the actions, including thinking, including um, teachers are waiting students, trying to facilitate the questions. And the students are trying to look for easier keywords to answer the questions. So for all points, I think it's very complicated uh, process. So today we are speaking about it. We are speaking about Brushu. The process, as I told you here, Rashi is a strategy that they used to uh, use in order to um, weigh students and students of their guidance and allow them to think about the questions, uh, try to uh, weight students, try to help them in cognitive work, rather than relying on their teachers to provide them uh, with easier questions or try to facilitate the questions. So we try to improve some sort of um, the cognitive uh, knowledge of the students, try to help them uh, to depend on themselves, not just waiting to teachers uh, who can give them easier points or try to facilitate issues for them. Our agenda today is including building ratio through questioning. We have some examples, wait time. We will see in action, I have like two videos, we will watch them about uh, pause wait time and cold calling because um, it's two important elements in both uh, ratio and receiving the questions. And modalities, visual and audio, encouraging them. And finally, the call to code. So here I have an uh, explanation, another definition for the ratio. And ratio is a way of not just waiting students to answer the questions, but it's more insightful uh, way of um, acknowledging uh, the way of our process was going easier with students, the educational process and teaching was going uh, easier or not. Um, if we are doing it in the right way or not, our students can understand or not. So these are the questions we are asking ourselves during the process of teaching. So I think it was very important to know 
that rush you as some sort of a line uh, to between the chain and uh, the, the outcome we are reaching with our students. So here we have uh, the input, okay? The input here is the teaching and what we are giving to our students and the output, the outcome or uh, receiving answers, which we are waiting uh, from our students. So according to, just a second, according to um, David Levin, here the term is uh, uh, known as high achieving knowledge, and, uh, and which is power here, schools in many people's eyes, one of the country's most insightful and effective for teachers. As you impress Russia, you will find yourself self-fairly completing the problem as a board without input, of your students. It's very important to have the link between the input, okay, so the teaching process and the outcome, the intended le learning outcomes, which are be waiting uh, from our students, especially when we are making the assessment. So we are waiting them to give them to give us the answers to our questions at the end. So building Russia through questioning, actually it's, uh, here's the point is, how can you know your students uh, get the full understanding uh, of the topic you are explaining or not? How can you know this? Any answer? How could you know? Yeah, okay, so CCQs. So we have from Brenda, Shabin, CCQs, yes. Any other answer? Mm -hmm. No, using CCQ. Okay, so again, the question, how could you know? your students are getting a full grasp or a full understanding of the topic or not. Ask them, yes. Yes, wrong. Yes, great. So it's about questioning. It, the assessment at the end, depending on the questioning, yes, CCQs, yeah. Sometimes, so sometimes we are using CCQs to uh, to identify to which limit our students are reaching uh, the full grasp or full understanding of the topic. Yes, here is the questioning, not just CCQs, because CCQs is a way we are waiting students uh, to ask them in a way. Uh, not just a question, but we are waiting the answer from them. No. And uh, rush you, we can ask our students directly, directly without using CCQ. So we can go directly to the student. So uh, we can see this in action right now. I ask the student directly, uh, even the student is not raising his hand or her hand. So uh, I go to any student, I ask him directly, what can you get from this topic? Or what can you understand from this topic? So why Rashu is very different? Rashu is very different because we are going directly to any student. Okay, so it's very random. And uh, we can ask students who cannot get even any understanding or they cannot understand what's going on to ask them. Yeah, to concept. So it's half a statement. 
to complete uh, speaking, then in complete ideas, express half idea, ask students to finish it. Okay, so it's a way. So the next step is to combine sentence with what I told them. It's a way of completion. I may give them uh, true or false questions, and if they are saying or if they are understanding this or not. Uh, yes, yes. So sometimes, sometimes Randa, but it's a way we can know this by, as I told you, direct questions. I'm not just waiting for CCQs or change the concept of understanding. But here we are asking them to know more about the way of um, thinking uh, they are using. But here, we are having some sort of repeated examples. It may be um, uh, in, in teaching something like drama, repeated examples. Uh, when we are waiting them to uh, to to speak about something they learned about, okay. So sometimes we are giving them examples or terms and give us uh, another uh, example for the term. So it's some sort of repetition as well. It's some way of checking their understanding by repetition, not just given uh, one example. No, give me more examples. Here is another way of the ratio, check their concept of understanding. Yeah, teacher needs to be careful. They do not overload uh, their learners with information. Uh, yes, because sometimes it may lead to burden wrong. Sometimes if we are giving them uh, a lot of uh, 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 points related to the main point, so we will uh, leave them some sort of burden. But yes, okay, so we are not speaking about repetition, but we are speaking about examples. Okay, checking the examples, not repeating the same information. No. Give me example of what we preach it. Wait time. Wait time. So as I told you before, as I told you, um, wait time. What does mean wait time? If we are having. Uh, time for uh, for delivering uh, information or time and we have the same time for uh, asking questions and we are waiting time for receiving the answers. So what does it mean wait time? Well, if I can just jump in there and say that, you know, when I'm in a lecture hall, when I have 200 students or 300 students, there's no possible way that I can move forward without knowing that they know something that I'm talking about. So what I do is I'll throw some questions at them in, in sections and I'll say, I'm gonna come back in five minutes. So I'm gonna let you all talk, and but I want the answer to that question, okay? Yes. Uh, and I give them about, you know, what's called think time. Because, uh, you know, they can't give us the answer immediately, but if they can collaborate with one another, they'll find the answer, and then I'll come back and I say, okay, five minutes are up. What's, what's the answer to the question I asked? And I visualize the question, you know, on the projector so they can see it and they don't forget. They can focus on trying to find the answer. Because I Isn't think that's right. really, that's, the, I, yeah. that's how I do it. Yeah. Uh, before I move on to something more complicated, I want to make sure they understand what I have already done with them. And I actually, that's formative assessment. You know, I see it as formative assessment. Uh, that's how I do it. Yes, it's some sort of a scanning their understanding. As wait time is the time between asking them the questions, a way of assessing their performance and their thinking, and then trying to give them some time 
visualizing the answers, try to check the answers with the, with, with each other's and at the end, I'm waiting them to give me their final uh, answers. So this is wait time. Wait time, yes, I have a students, I have big number of students. So I'm giving them my final assessment questions, give them some time to think about it, give them some time to make their own uh, peer feedback or peer uh, checking, and then give me the final uh, answers. This is wait time. This is very important, not just uh, uh, sometimes when we are um, given the questions and we are finding our students raising their hands, we are very happy. They are raising their hands. Because, yeah, great, I did a great work. But when we are uh, receiving the answers, okay, there are a lot of mistakes in the answers. So we are very happy that they are raising their hands. No, the, the, the happiness is related, connected to the answers the quality of answers we are receiving. So this is a wait time. We have to give our students wait time. Uh, I have here a video of the classroom about this, just a second. As I walked around, many of you were able to tell me what the difference in opinion is between Aunt Alexandra and Atticus on Calpurnia. So our discussion is going to focus on why. Jaya. Absolutely. Two snaps for, Ari for uh, Anne Marie. One, two. So we know he's agitated. The question is, what's agitating him? Thoughts? <laughs> Great. And if you're looking in your book, make sure you pause and track our share. What does Atticus say about mockingbirds again? Here. What is uh, the main point mentioned here and or noticed in this video? Anyone can tell me about that? Yes, yes. So wait for students to process information and come up with the answer. We are not uh, uh, choosing the students directly, even if they are raising their hands. So, okay, great. So. A true student, tell me uh, the answer now. Give them some, some time, think about it. In this video, the teacher did not uh, choose directly as a student to answer the question. So she was waiting, she's, uh, she's, she's like trying to leave some time for students to think more about the question and maybe trying to change the answers and so on. So I'm not just waiting for the answer. I'm waiting for the quality of the answers. We have another Don't one. Think, uh, yeah, do you believe that that teacher, you know, when I saw the video, I felt that that was almost a very disciplinary approach, almost Pavlovian actually, uh, that how she's training them, uh, you know, I, I personally, I, I, I would use that in a classroom. Uh, it almost looks like she's using teaching uh, to discipline them. Uh, 
Uh, and that could have a negative effect on them, I think. Uh, there's other ways to do, you know, uh, what you're talking about uh, without making it look like it's disciplinary or even Pavlovian. Because, uh, you know, I can tell you that that's not going to work with university students. That won't work with university students, at least not the ones I deal with. <laughs> They're not going to do that. Actually, actually, some does may have, as you said, a negative impact on students. But if you're looking at if they are very convinced that they have the right answer or they are getting the full grasp, full understanding of the, the answer, they want to change it. Okay, so if they are very convinced and um, no one can persuade them with, with another answer, so why I'm afraid uh, there is a negative impact on them. So I'm leaving them uh, with little time to think, maybe uh, try to take the answer with another one. Why not? So I may be the right one, and my colleague may be having a very um, a different answer. So I'm waiting for him to think. I may give him another uh, hint to think about the right answer. So I think it's not the negative impact uh, in all times, but it's uh, a way of um, thinking more, try to think about the quality or increase my, my answer, try to polish it. So this is the point I'm, I'm thinking about. So we have another one, we have another video for the waiting time. Within a day, he was elected as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress, when he had had met, at which time the delegates Within a day, he was elected as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress, when he had been in England for the First Continental Congress had met, at which time the delegates had agreed to stop importing goods. What exactly was the purpose of the First Continental Congress? What did they accomplish? Two hands, four hands, five, six, seven, eight hands, nine hands. I love all the people looking back in the text trying to find that answer. Hands down, take 10 seconds and go back into the text and find it. Five seconds to find my answer. Not yet. I know it's exciting times when you know the answer. Three, two, one. Hands up! Five hands, six hands, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Trenton all the way to back, column five. I'm oh, sorry, column three, four, five. Go ahead, Trenton. What was the purpose of the First Continental Congress? I'm sorry, what? To stop importing British goods. Yeah, you know, what exactly does that word mean? To import British goods. To import something. Dom? Um, to import British goods means like to import supplies, some powder. Yeah, exactly. It means to bring it into your own country. So the colonies were bringing in British. Here we're back. So here, as I told you, even we have the answers, maybe right answers. But in wait time, we are not waiting the answers. We are waiting for quality. Uh, teacher here tries to give students more time. He is uh, numbering them, try to count one to three, four, and try to give them much more time to think about it. Even when he received the first answer, he was uh, totally persuaded, but he wanted more. Uh, uh, Queens wanted more quality to think about the question again. This is uh, wait time. And another point uh, related to rush you is uh, cold calling. 
what 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 does mean cold calling here? I'm trying to share it. What does mean cold calling? Hmm. Anyone here heard about this word before? Cold calling. Well, if I understand it correctly, the person you're going to choose doesn't know that you're going to pick them. Uh, and picking I... the person, picking the person to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ron. Yes, it's it's how to pick a student uh, who can answer the questions. Because sometimes we are going to be mistaken while choosing students who are raising their hands. Because sometimes uh, when we are choosing such students uh, who are raising their hands, we say, yes, they are the only students who can get the, the right answer. But, but that's not true. All the students who raise their hand, yeah, yes. all the students who raise their hand doesn't mean they know the answer. They want to say something, but they might not know the correct answer. Uh, sometimes that's because, okay. Too. Yeah, sometimes we ignore that. Uh, some students have some sort of, um, um, I, I can say, they are shy. They are uh, afraid of, of telling or speaking, but by doing cold calling, choosing students who are very uh, silent. So we are breaking the cultural points here. So we are engaging them with other students. We are putting them on the pacing. So it's a very important point to know that cold calling, not just calling students who are raising their hands, but we are calling the students even if they are silent. Because here we are having three important points. The first one, we are putting them on uh, the right pacing. We are breaking um, uh, the cultural uh, fear, or uh, if we are saying that, it's we are creating <coughs> some uh, culture engagement, uh, mm -hmm. involve our students in the classroom, and we are making some sort of backstopping with the students themselves. Okay, just to give them time to speak and introduce themselves or what's going on in their minds. So here it is very important uh, because uh, we are creating a, a very healthy classroom, a very great environment, not just with persons or raising their hands, but we are involving others who are um, silent. Uh, in cold calling, here I have another video uh, related to cold calling and how to uh, say that, how to involve students in cold calling uh, point or process. The one I wanted to go over was the very first one. Uh, we have a rectangle. What are the dimensions of it, Lamani? X minus one, X plus three. X minus one, and X plus three. What's the other piece of information we're given, Tevin? That is that the area is 32 inches. Good. Area is 
Just included the unit. Now, how do we find the area of a rectangle like this? Hmm. 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 Chelsea, your hand was up in your mind, I could tell. That's exactly right. So, yeah, that's exactly right. We'd multiply our length times our width. That x minus 1 times our x plus 3 is equal to 32. 30. Now, uh, our, our FOIL champions, I don't want to waste your time by doing that. When you fold it out, Anj, what'd you get? Okay, I'm not finished. What do we need to do? Yeah, no, we're going to pick on you. Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> okay, what do we have? Which is? Great, so now I'm going to look for factors of negative 3 that no, add up. No, no. Yeah. No. Factors of C that add up to B. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Terry. Yeah, that's your equal to zero. Oh, so what do I need to do in order to make it equal to 0? So I subtract 32 from both sides of the equal sign. 32 minus 32 is, ah, now we're there. Negative 3 minus 32. We worked 3 steps from 0. We took 32 more steps from 0. Where do we end up? Yeah, good. OK, so Jody, help us out now. We're going to be looking for what in order to solve for x here? Good, so give me numbers. So, here we back. Like 60 uh, students uh, of students inside the classroom, the teacher did not choose them uh, of people who are raising their hands. He only uh, chooses students who are silent, who are students in the corner, who are trying to hide, uh, who try to pop a curtain between them and between the other uh, students in the classroom. So try to engage them, try to put them on the track of the pace. Very important because uh, you are, um, I can say you are getting a win with a new student uh, or you are getting a win uh, with a new player in your classroom who can add a lot to other people or who can encourage other uh, to participate uh, in, in the answers or uh, try to add more value and quality to the answers. Anyways, I'm very happy that we are reaching uh, the end of my topic today. Uh, there is any question, I'm very happy and uh, very pleased to receive it. If there is any question, Uh, do we have any questions, Samra? Um, actually, no. Mm -hmm. There are no questions. I'd I like think to, all uh, of yeah. the questions are were answered in the mm -hmm. within the yeah. session. I realized after watching the second video that what the the methodology is called super teaching. That's the name of this methodology that they're all using. It's called super teaching. Uh, and yes. you can learn that, okay? It's a learned methodology uh, or approach, whatever you want to call it, uh, of using signals and, you know, um, and it's a combination also, I could see that the last teacher was doing dialogic sort of teaching, but you know, that super teaching methodology, I have to say, uh, is when you're doing this, you know, trying to get people engaged and, you know, create interactivity within the learning process, I think it is important to um, make sure, you know, I noticed that the third teacher was writing on the board. And during my teacher training, you know, I educate many teachers a year uh, and many, uh, and I tell them that they're not allowed to write on the board. They're not allowed to write anything. So they have to find ways of engaging their students 
but they themselves as a teacher should be managing the learning process by being Socratic, uh, creating dialogue. And like you say, you know, cold calling. And what I do is I teach them and they watch me do it, uh, where I walk around the room with a marker uh, and not just one, but like 10 of them sometimes, five in one and five in the other. And I hand a marker to some students who I know have not been speaking that much. Uh, and then tell them, I'm going to, uh, and I give them a card with a question on it. Uh, the other students don't know what the question is. They have 15 minutes to come up with the answer. I don't care where they find it from. Uh, and then they have to go and write it on the board as little as possible. Uh, I'm just managing that. Super teaching can be done in many different ways, but what you were showing us there, and you should, people here in the room should Google super teaching uh, because it's, that's yeah, exactly it's not awesome. just about, yeah. It's not just about teaching, writing the word, but using your visual uh, uh, scenery here is very important mm -hmm. because uh, not leave your student to think about the answers. You can mm -hmm. write on the air and drive them uh, to give them time to think about what you're writing, not just on board. You can use a lot of things. You cannot use, uh, or you may uh, be using very simple um, tools to give them a great impact and a great outcome at the end. So here is the point. Um, super teacher uh, not using uh, smart uh, words, not using uh, highly tech uh, tools, but they can use very, very simple tools to achieve the outcome at the end of their uh, process. And then thank oh, you yeah. very much, Ron. Thank, thank you very much for all of you. And thank you, Mom. Thank you very much.